G'day, Blade Dickheads Vaping Bogan. Back again for another Dinky Die review. Hope you're all right as rain. Got a new RDA to have a squeeze at. Well, not exactly new. It's been out for a couple of months, but once again, I'm late to the fucking party. But uh, this time's kind of worked out well because I have something that the other reviewers didn't have, and that is a competition cap for the Kong RDA. So this one comes with a bit more airflow than the stock caps that you get uh, with the Kong. We're going to have a look at the whole RDA, obviously, and the, uh, the standard caps that it comes with. It does come with three caps when you get the master kit. This one here is a competition cap for those that want a little bit more fucking air than the stock one offers. I've got it sitting atop the Vert V2 from Unicorn Vapes Inc. Got a bit of matchy match kind of stainless steel ring action going on. So if the three top caps that you get with the Kong RDA out of the box weren't enough for you, there's now another one available with more airflow. Let's take it for a little ripperoo. I've got some 0.1 ohm aliens in here. Plenty of fucking airflow now with that competition cap, and uh, yeah, I'd say the clouds are a little bit increased, but I think the flavor might be just a smidgen better on the stock cap. We'll go through all the bits and bobs in a moment, but before we can get there, yeah, you guessed it, let's crack a fucking beer. Got a big old can of beer from one of my favorite American brewers, Rogue Brewing. This is their Shakespeare Stout. It's a nitro. And like every Rogue, we got a big old write-up on the back here. It says, like every true classic, this beer is worth discovering a new year after year three decades ago we brewed this award-winning stout to honor ashland the birthplace of rogue and home of the celebrated oregon shakespeare festival it pours ebony in color with a rich creamy head and a mellow chocolate malt finish drink it straight out of the can or to see the cascade of tiny bubbles open it and quickly turn it upside down over a glass enjoy the show Sounds pretty good to me. Well, this one's coming in at 5.7% and uh, 60 IBU, and uh, they are brewing this one over in Newport, Oregon. Well, let's just see how she bloody tastes. Let's drink a beer. Let's drink it here. go. The cascade of tiny bubbles, dickheads. Gotta love a creamy fucking stout head. That is looking delish. A fucking cheers. That is how a nitro stout is supposed to be. Thick, creamy, loads of chocolate and malt flavors in there. Just a hint of sort of sweetness, but then a bitter black coffee kind of flavor. That is just fair dinkum, straight up nitro stout. Bloody good. Yeah, it's got that real thick Guinness feel to it. It's got that creaminess in there. It does obviously have a whole lot more flavor, I think, than a Guinness. There's a sweetness there, that molasses and caramel flavor. Really fucking good. I can see why it's been brewed for so long. Let's pair it up with a bloody liquid. Canadian hardware, American beer, and we have an Israeli e-liquid. This one is from OG Clouds, and it is an OG cookie. As you can see by the pictures there, it's a, a cream cookie flavor. Really love this liquid. It was sent to me by one of my Patreons. Fucking cheers, Liev. I really like this. It's got a fantastic sugar cookie flavor to it and then a creamy vanilla feel. It is just a fucking delicious bakery dessert flavor. Usually goes well with stouts and whatnot. Oh, that is fucking amazing. Yeah, the creamy vanilla flavors from this liquid go perfectly with the creamy chocolate and coffee flavors of the beer. That is just fan-fucking-tastic. Yeah, the bready biscuit bakery element of uh, the sugar cookie just pairs perfectly with your sort of malty bread flavors of a stout. The sweetness goes really well with that uh, creaminess, the caramel, the biscuit, the chocolate, the coffee. It's just a fucking winner. Anyway, enough waffling over that shit. Let's get down the up and bloody close and find out if our little Kong RDA is a winner. Let's have a sticky beak. 
Okie fucking dokie dickheads, this is the packaging your Kong Master Kit will come in. I haven't seen any other versions of the Kong around, so I think they're all Master Kits, but uh, there may be something in the future where they're not like this. But let's see what you get inside. Well, you'll get a deck. One, two, three top caps, bag of spare O-rings, grub screws, a squonk pin, and a couple of tools, certificate of authenticity, and a QP design sticker. But let's get into it. So, it comes with three different coloured top caps. Now, this is a newer version of the Master Kit. Initially, when it first dropped and the first one they sent me, it came with three different coloured top caps. So it came with uh, a matte black, very nice matte black finish to it, a stainless steel, which is just your standard sort of uh, satin stainless steel finish, and then also a brass came along with a black drip tip and a clear drip tip, and uh, you got three different materials uh, for your top caps. Pretty fucking cool. Now, after I got the first master kit, they sent along a second one with uh, some new colors, and this is what they've got listed on their website. So you should be able to find the first release with the brass, the stainless, and the matte black, but you'll also be able to find the new kit, which comes with uh, more of a gun metal, and you can see the difference. It looks quite similar, but there is a slight difference. It's a fairly light gun metal, but it is noticeably darker than the straight stainless steel. There's also a difference in the black. So the first kit was a matte black and now they've got a satin black, which I think both look very fucking tidy. And then the new version, instead of a brass cap, you're getting a nice polished copper cap, which uh, will appeal to those that like copper fucking mods. But uh, pretty cool that you can find both variations. I think on the uh, website, for QP, they've only got the new um, gunmetal, satin black, and copper edition, but uh, plenty of other websites out there still stocking the first one. So uh, see what you fucking can find. Both versions of the Master Kit are out there. It may have gone to a satin finish, I think, because of the new version of the Prey mod, also by QP Designs, which uh, now has a satin finish to it, a satin black, which is going to look really nice with the satin black cap for the Kong. So that's probably why they've gone to a satin black finish because now on the Prey, you've got a uh, black Delrin ring around here, which matches better with a satin finish rather than a matte finish. So I think that's probably why they've gone to satin black because it's gonna match with their Prey mod and the black Delrin rings now on the Prey. So there you go, that's what it's gonna look like with the Prey, very fucking tidy. But enough faffing about, let's get into the RDA itself. So as you know, it's 28 millimeters in diameter. You've got uh, a wider drip tip than uh, what it's often on some of the other QP uh, atomizers, but it is that same QP shape with a little flare around the bottom there. You've got the O-ring on the inside, so all of my custom tips have fit in here, no problems. Tolerances are all very nice. You've got a honeycomb airflow on the side here, so you've got uh, a row of three high and a row of seven wide. So fair bit of airflow there, but uh, I will say that it's a little bit more restricted than what you might be expecting for a 28 mil Addy. There's just a slight bit of uh, restriction on the inhale, but they do offer that new competition cap which is available separately. And as you can see, this has a five wide, two high set of holes, but the holes are much bigger and there is noticeably more airflow with this competition cap. Everything else about it is exactly the same, just a little bit different and a little bit more airflow. So let's have a look at the control there. You're just twisting the top piece here, okay? I don't know whether you can see it with the camera, but it is uh, adjusting it from left to right. If we kind of grab and twist, we can pull that top off. There we go. As you can see, you're just twisting it like so to uh, adjust it from left to right. A couple of O-rings there to secure it and uh, a nice dome shape on the inside of the top cap there. Going to give you some nice smooth flavor. As you can see, quite a thick wall to the barrel itself and then another fairly thick wall on the AFC. So uh, once you put those two together, you've got you know a good few millimeters of thickness there on the top cap and quite a, a chunky top to it as well. So it's really good for um, not getting too hot uh, on the old gob, which is a nice feature. I like a thick, sturdy walled RDA. You got Kong on one side, just a simple little bit of branding there. I don't mind it. Normally I don't like the names of fucking products written on the side, but I kind of like the simple Kong and then they've just got QP Design 
running down the other side. Some nice little sort of uh, bands up the top here. Gives it a, a really kind of classic RDA sort of look to it. Onto the bottom, you've got the usual branding there. You've got a serial number and you have uh, a nice hybrid safe 510 pin. Uh, not the most hybrid safe that I've seen, but there is a satisfactory amount of protrusion there. That gold pin sticking out from the stainless steel threads. If your Kong or any other atomizer for that matter doesn't have a protruding pin from the threads, do not use it on a hybrid mechanical mod. So let's have a look at the deck. So first thing to point out is it does have a locking mechanism so the top cap won't just spin and spin. You've got this little uh, notch here on the edge of the deck, one on the other side, and that's going to line up with this little groove in the top cap. Now, one thing that is a little bit annoying is you've got no wiggle room there because the notch is basically the same width as the uh, little gap in here. Once you put this on, you can't recenter your airflow, which is a little bit annoying because if you were to close off some of this airflow here, say halve it, you are now going to be off center. Okay, so your air is going to be coming in sort of one side of your coil and you can't readjust the top cap so that the air is more centralized on your coil. That easily could have been remedied by uh, just making this little groove here on the inside of the top cap, making that just a little bit wider, you know, make it go four or five times the width of this little notch here and that way you would still have a locking mechanism but it would be rotatable by say 45 degrees or, or so just to recenter that bunch of holes over your coil so that you can have a uh, nice centralized airflow. Not a big deal, but something that always annoys me when we see uh, notch systems that sort of limit your repositioning of the airflow. Let's have a look at this deck here though, because it is quite a clever design. It's a big chunky block right in the middle there. You've got four grub screws coming through the top flat heads, and then you've got one, two, three, four holes all the way around. Now these uh, holes on either side will go all the way through. So if I was to unwind this grub screw and this one, you'll be able to see straight through the post there. So it does mean that your legs can kind of overlap each other if you are being a bit lazy and then you just clamp them down or you can clip your legs short enough so that they kind of stop before they start going underneath the second uh, grub screw. So quite a simple installation process. If you want to see me doing the build and wicking for the first time, there'll be a link in the description to the live stream I did a uh, month or two ago and uh, you can see it's pretty straightforward. The other thing that I really like about this uh, block here is you've got this big hole going straight down the center and uh, that is basically for uh, juice so that you can drip straight through the top of your uh, drip tip and it'll go down this hole and then come out either side down to where your wick ends are. So it's uh, very efficient at delivering your liquid straight down into your well because you just drip straight through the top and it runs straight into the fucking well. So I really like that. Very easy, fuss-free dripping and uh, easy installation of your coils. If you're using the squonk pin, the liquid's going to come out on either side via those little holes there. So efficient for dripping and also for squonking. Juice well is pretty adequate. It's uh, not super deep here, but once you've got the top cap on, uh, your airflow is up quite high, so you don't have to worry about uh, liquid pouring out. If you over drip it, just don't take your top cap off. Um, otherwise, this shallow juice well may be overflowing. But yeah, pretty clever and simple block design there. There is enough room for a three millimeter in a diameter coil, which is what I've been using on this one here. There's not heaps more room, so I would say because of the thick walls on your top cap, I wouldn't go any more than three millimeter ID. And if you've got really, really thick wire, you may be getting a little bit close to the edge, but three millimeters went in just fine. There's still room between the coil and the post. So uh, yeah, no problems with your uh, larger coils. And uh, I've positioned them sort of just with the top of my coil a little bit higher than the top of the block there. And these beautiful aliens from Mystic Coils here in Australia, they are uh, three strands of 26 gauge nichrome wrapped in a 36 gauge with a uh, three millimeter ID, as I mentioned, and they came in for me right where I like my uh, aliens around the 0.1 ohms. Been very happy with the flavor and performance off of these guys as usual. But that is about it for the Kong RDA dickheads. Plenty of fucking choices there. Let's get up top, talk pros, cons, prices and everything fucking else. So there fucking is the Kong RDA or RDAs. 
you might say. <laughs> Plenty of top caps there. Let's get into the pros and bloody cons. What do I like? What do I fucking dislike? Well, once again with QP, love the extras, love the bonus top caps. Really fucking awesome when a company throws in so many bits and pieces uh, in the one thing. You're getting drip tips, you're getting top caps, so you can run essentially three different looks with this RD8, which is pretty fucking awesome. Or you can mix and match your top cap components. You could have a fucking black top with a stainless steel barrel. Yeah, it's pretty cool when they do that. They've done it with a bunch of their other products, so nice to see they're doing it again. The performance is also pretty fucking awesome. The smoothness of the airflow is a big pro on this one. With the standard stock cap, it is super fucking smooth. And the flavor is very tasty as well. For a side airflow RDA, it's right up there. It's not going to be the best flavor you can get from an RDA because it's not bottom airflow, but for something with side airflow that you can just, as Nick would say, blur your juice in there, uh, it's got really, really nice flavor. Probably somewhere around an Asgard kind of thing in terms of uh, flavor. And uh, speaking of blur your fucking juice in there, <laughs> love that uh, post design they've got with the big hole in the middle. You can literally just dump your juice through the fucking top there and it delivers it really nicely uh, out the sides of the, the block to your uh, wick ends. So very efficient for just tripping through the top there like the fucking post design and easy to get your coils in as well. You've got a hole for each of your coil legs, you've got a screw for each of your coil legs. You can overlap them as well. If you want to be a bit lazy, you can overlap the legs from each side, but if you want to keep them separated, well, you can do that as well. Um, the main thing that makes it easy is having four holes and four screws. So uh, I like what they've done there with the, the center block. It does a, a good job of uh, making easy installation, but also easy usage or uh, easy dripping when you're fucking uh, using it. Also, don't mind the look of this one. I think it's a, a pretty tidy looking RDA. Uh, I like the shape of it, like the design. Uh, 28 millimeters, it's gonna look good on your larger mods if that's what you're into. Build quality is also very nice as you'd expect from QP Designs, just a cut above a lot of your other uh, sort of RDAs out there. And it's a solid product as well. You've got a lot of top cap here, which is good for, I suppose, some quality feeling, but also helps with uh, reducing heat dissipation, just a bigger, thicker top there, uh, seems to keep everything fairly cool. So what have I got to fucking complain about? Not a whole lot here, to be honest. Um, usual complaints with a, uh, a locking system, so it's got the little uh, top cap locking um, lug that sticks up. Why not make the fucking bit that it sits in a little bit bigger? Make it a tray so that you can rotate your top cap a little bit. Because when you go to close off the airflow, if I start closing it off from one side, my airflow is no longer centered on my coil and I can't adjust the top cap position at all to recenter it. Uh, we see this again and again with RDAs and I don't understand it. The fucking Bonza came out, what, three bloody years ago and that has a track system. Use the track system, guys. It's really simple. Put a fucking prong in there and then put a track. And so your top cap can spin, say, a quarter and then it hits the fucking notch and it can't spin anymore. It does the thing that you're looking to do and that is make your top cap easy to get on and off of your fucking mods, but it also allows you to readjust your airflow so that it's centered when you close it down. I just don't understand why time and time again we're seeing RDA top caps that have the little lug and then a tiny little groove for it to sit in and no fucking wiggle room. Just beyond me as to why we want to fix the outer top cap in one place only. Allow it to rotate. It's not a fucking hard thing to do. Just machine out the groove that the fucking knob sticks in and yeah, I, I don't know why I'm making it such a thing on this one, but <laughs> I'm just sick of seeing it. Seen it a bunch lately on products where we don't have any uh, wiggle room on the uh, the locking system. Anyway, that's probably my main uh, complaint because I honestly don't have anything else here to really whinge about. The only other thing you could say is it's a little bit restrictive. For something that's 28 millimeters, can take a set of three millimeter alien coils, there isn't as much airflow as you might expect. There's the fucking stock cap. And now with the competition cap, You can hear the airflow difference there and obviously I can fucking feel it. So some people might be expecting or wanting a little bit more airflow. The stock cap 
is semi-restrictive for something that I think is geared towards more of a, a higher wattage cloud chasing kind of experience. You can obviously get that competition cap, so it's not the end of the world, but if you're gonna have uh, one sort of thing to complain about, lack of airflow would probably be um, the one for some people. But apart from that, I honestly don't have anything else to fucking whinge about. So what's the little fucker gonna set you back? Well, I did a bit of a Google. I can't put links in the description thanks to YouTube policy, so don't ask me where you can bloody get them. Use your Google Foo skills, but you'll find it for about 80 bucks, which is a little higher on the side of uh, things. If you are looking at plenty of other RDAs out in there for half the price, then it's a bit expensive. But you do get three top caps in there, so it's kind of balanced out a little bit. Uh, your $80 US gets you almost three RDAs, um, which is pretty cool. So yeah, it's a little bit more than some of the cheaper options out there, but it also offers quite a bit more in terms of uh, what they give you. Now the competition cap, I can't find anywhere on the internet. Uh, sorry, dickheads. So I can't tell you how much they're gonna cost, but I don't think they're gonna be terribly expensive. It is just the top cap on its own. So uh, keep your eyes peeled for uh, when those start to drop. But um, yeah, overall, a really decent, side airflow, cloud chasers RDA, good balance of cloud chasing and flavor and some uh, nice design and build. So that'll fucking do me, dickheads. I'll put the usual Instagram and Facebook links down in the description if you wanna see what this muppet gets up to outside the YouTube videos. If you wanna support my channel, please do. Hit the like, hit the subscribe button, share it around, it always helps me out. But if you really wanna keep me doing my thing, then think about hitting some of my support links. As I say every video, this is an independent channel, which means I don't take payments for doing reviews. There's no sneaky jumping the queue fees or any kind of payments. I wanna make sure that you're getting a truly unbiased opinion on the products I'm talking about, but a bit of public support is how I pay the bills. So hit my Patreon page, the special content. I vlog on there each week you won't see here on YouTube, as well as all the extra gear I get. I've got a spare one of these master kits I'll be passing on to some lucky fucker because those dickheads keep me doing my thing. So bloody cheers. But if you can't, that's all good. Sit back, sub me fucking dicks off or your bloody tits off. I couldn't give a shit what it is you're vaping on. Whether it's an RDA, RTA, sub tank or a fucking pod, as long as you're not banging the bloody bungers, that's all that matters. Cheers for tuning in. Cheery fucking oh. Fucking top, we got ourselves. <laughs> Dinky die review. Hope you're all doing as. <laughs> got a, a new. Why is the dog squeaking? Well, it's not kind of. Fuck. Uh, a updated. Ca. Ca. Cunt. Fucking cunt.